In this video, we take a look at string manipulation questions from the Paper 2 exam for Computer Science 9618 AS level. Here's what you need to know. You need to be familiar with using left, right, length, and mid. Understanding how to use these is vital to answering the questions on your Paper 2 exam that will deal with string manipulation. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is just saying, well, they'll give me a reference sheet, so I don't really need to know these. Remember, the exam does not have a lot of built-in flex time. They expect you to solve the problems effectively and efficiently. You're not going to have time to learn how left, right, length, and mid work during the exam. Now remember, it's not just string manipulation, but problem solving as well. Now here's the appendix sheet you're going to receive, or one very similar to it. It looks like this. This is what they call the appendix. It's usually going to be the last page or the second page to last page of the exam. It shows you mid, length, left, right, L case, mod, anything that's gonna be used in the uh, exam. When you're looking at mid, it, you, you get the starting point and you get the ending point from the uh, starting point or how many characters you want. So here, they want to start at character two, which is B, and they want three characters from B, including B. So that's one, two, three, that's how they get B, C, D. For length, uh, you see happy days. You may be saying that's nine. Don't forget the space has an ASCII code value, has an ASCII code value of 32, and because it does, it counts as a character. Left, you start at the left and you count how many characters you want. So this says it wants three, so we start left here. Character one is A, character two is B, character three is C. That's how they get A, B, C. Right, uh, you start from the right hand side, it wants three characters, so you count one, two, three, and it returns F, G, H. L case converts an uppercase character to lowercase, mod gives you uh, the remainder, but we're focusing on string manipulation, but we will be using uh, mod just as a review in one of the questions. Let's go ahead and let's dive in. Practice question one preview. So let's take a look at this practice question. A string conversion function string clean is to be written. Okay, so it's a function, so we know it's gonna return something. That's gonna be a point right there. Uh, this function will form a new string out string from a given string in string by removing all non-alphabetic characters. Okay, convert all alphabetic characters lowercase, not a problem. For example, in string, good morning, Dave. Out string becomes good morning Dave, no spaces because that is a non alphabetic character and converts everything to lowercase. So, looking at this, we need to know how to do this. We need to say, okay, can I isolate each character in the string to remove the space and to make each character lowercase? And of course, we can, and they give us uh, some pseudocode uh, that was uh, written. So here's what we have. And this is 11 points, and this is an easy 11 points if you break it down and you use what they have given you. So they said function string clean. What's going to be uh, passed? That's going to be in string, which is going to be declared as a string, and it's going to return a string. That's what it's going to do. So right there, we've picked up a few points. Declare next char. What is the data type for char? That's character. Declare something as a string. Well, I know in string, I'm going to manipulate and I'm going to form out string. Then I need to initialize out string. So I set out string equal to quote, quote, which means it has a value. It doesn't have a space. Those That's a open quote followed by a close quote because it is a string. I have to do that. Then loop through in string to produce the out string. For in is one, two. Well, in string could be any length. So all I need to do is simply get the length of in string. My next character, well, I need to isolate the current character or the first letter, then the second, then the third of in string. So I'm gonna use mid. I'm gonna work with my in string string. I wanna start at position in, and I want one character starting from position in. That, that will isolate each character. Then, next char, I need to convert it to lowercase. Well, next char, I need to convert to lowercase and store it in next char. So next char becomes L case next char. That will convert whatever letters in here to lowercase. Now, if it's already lowercase, it doesn't matter. It will still stay lowercase, so it works out. Now, I need to check to see if it's alphabetic. So I'm checking to see if next char is greater than or equal to A and next char is less than or equal to lowercase z. The reason I'm checking between lowercase A and lowercase z is because I just converted next char to a lowercase 
character. If I put a capital A here and next char lowercase z here, my program will still run. It will still work. However, it's not going to work efficiently because I don't need to check capital A, B, C, D all the way through capital Z because it converted to lowercase. Keep things like that in mind. Then I need to add it to outstring. So outstring becomes whatever outstring currently is. And then my next char, I end if, I end my for loop, and then I simply gonna return outstring. And it's not returns outstring, it's just return outstring. That's a typo on uh, my part. So it's just return outstring. And just like that, we pick up 11 points. All right. Let's discuss this part of the exam, which could cause you to lose easy points. This part right here, when you are working with characters, you need to use a single quote, not a double quote. A single quote, like single quote X, close quote X, is for character data types. While a set of double quotes, quote quote, is for string data types. Remember this, so you do not lose easy points on the exam. They will know you for this. Let's take a look at another practice question. Looking at practice, question two is another way they could test to see if you know how to use string manipulation. Evaluate the following expressions when my string has the value adaptive space maintenance. So the expression is a capital D and using the right um, string manipulation method, they're going to work with my string and they want four. So I'm going to start from the right, which is going to be where the E is in maintenance. I need to count over four and that gives me a N C E. I'm combining that with a capital D and that gives me dance. Now that takes care of the first one. The next one is a little more uh, complex. We have left right my string seven three. So right is going to be performed first. So I'm going to start on the right hand side. I'm going to use uh, adaptive maintenance and I'm going to count to seven. So I count over seven that gives me to Nance. So I'm going to write that down on my paper because I don't want to do this in my head. I'm simply going to write that down on my paper so I know what I'm working with. And then it says, okay, it wants me to take to Nance and it wants me to use left and move over three. So when I do that, I get to 10 and that gives me 10 because those are strings and not characters. I'm going to put quotes around them. So that is how you do that one. Let's go ahead and move on to another uh, exam question. So this is uh, another way they could do it. And this has some review in here. So we're not going to skip that review. We'll just go ahead and do it again for the built-in functions list. Refer to the appendix on page 15. You should really only be doing that for a quick refresher, not trying to learn how these things work. So here we have MUN, M-O-N, and we're going to bind it with mid of my greeting 10 2. So I'm going to find my greeting, which is happy birthday, and I'm going to go to the 10th character, which is going to be the T. Starting from the T, it wants me to go two characters. So T would be the first character, H would be the second. I combine that with M-O-N, and I get month. I have to put a capital M there because they have a capital M and I have to put it in quotes because it is a string. Next one, aging years and the ASCII code of my initial. My aging years is 27. My initial is C. What is the ASCII code value of C? Hmm, they told us we didn't have to memorize the ASCII code table. And you are correct, you don't have to have it memorized. You do need to be familiar and you should know that capital A starts at 65. If capital A has an ASCII code value of 65, capital B has a ASCII code value of 66, which means capital C must have an ASCII code value of 67. 67 plus 27 is 94. No quotes around it because addition is being used here. Those are integers. It's very important you do not put string, uh, quotes around that. Now, if you are not familiar with ASCII code, if you can remember that capital A is 65 and lowercase a is 97, you'll be able to figure out what any ASCII code value of any character is. Then we have int my initial. So what that means is it's going to convert my initial to an integer. So my initial C. We can't convert that to an integer. We can convert it to the ASCII code value, but we can't convert that to an integer. That would be if you have a real or decimal number. So this is gonna show an error. Mod, wait times to uh, 10. 
Okay, so this means we're going to take weight, which is 60.5. We're going to multiply it by 2. We're going to mod it by 10. And mod just gives us the remainder. So this comes out to 121. 60.5 times 2 comes out to 121. When I divide or when I do 121 mod 10, how many times does 10 go into 121? It goes into it 12 times. That gives me 120. What is left over? 1. Because if I get 120, how far am I to 121? What's left over? What's the remainder? 1. Married and not children. So married is true, not children. Children is true, so not true is false. When we have true and false, we know that that comes out to false. In order for it to become true, going through an AND gate or Boolean expression, both values must be true. So we we're focusing on the mid part, but we went ahead and did this review as well. Let's go ahead and move on to the last practice question. Taking a look at the last question, uh, which is going to be question four, a multi-user computer system makes use of passwords. To be valid, a password must comply with the following rules. At least two lowercase alphabetic characters, at least two uppercase alphabetic characters, at least three numeric characters, alphanumeric characters only. So what they want us to do is they want us to use string manipulation, use mid, isolate each individual character, determine if it's lowercase, uppercase, zero to nine, or and make sure there are no special characters. That's what it means by alphanumeric characters only. A function, validate password, is needed to check that a given password follows these rules. This function takes a string pass as a parameter, returns a Boolean value. So they give us the name of the function, validate password. They give us the parameter name called pass, and it tells us it returns a Boolean value. True, if pass contains a valid password, false otherwise. Write program code to implement the new function, validate password. Now I know this says write program code, we're going to write pseudocode for this video because in 9618, they have changed it from Computer Science 9608. In 9608 Computer Science, you had to write program code for paper two. Now in 9618, they have changed it where you're just writing pseudocode. So I strongly recommend you give this one a try. Go ahead, pause the video, and we'll resume here in just a moment. All right, let's go ahead and let's go over the solution here. So, function validate password, that's what they said the name of it was. It accepts pass as a parameter, so I put that inside my parentheses. Pass is going to be declared as, is going to be accepted as a string, and of course it returns a Boolean value. I have to declare some variables. I need ukase num. This is going to keep track of how many uppercase letters there are. You cannot use ukase. That is a reserved uh, method or reserved um, function that is going to be used. So you can't use ukase. That's why you have ukase num. Lcase, same thing. Lcase num keeps track of how many uh, num or lowercase letters there are. Numchars is the number of characters, 0 to 9, i, all of those have been declared as an integer. I need current character cur char as a character, and I need to declare valid as Boolean. Having those things is enough to get me a few points. Now, I'm going to set valid to false because it has not been met yet. The two uppercase letters, two lowercase letters, the three characters that are numbers, zero to nine, no special characters, that hasn't been met. So I'm going to set valid set to uh, false. Now, I run my for loop. For i is one to length of password. Now, or pass, which is the parameter. I don't know how long it's going to be. It can accept any password, so that's why I use length. I'm getting the length of that parameter pass. I need to isolate each character. That's where my cur char comes in. That's where the mid string manipulation comes in. I'm working with pass. I'm going to start a character i. I want one character. Now I'm going to use my if statements. Now this is going to take up a lot of space because of the way they want us to format if statements. If you haven't watched the pseudocode uh, guide video I put up, I strongly recommend you do so because if you don't use pseudocode correctly, they are going to deduct points for it. They want if on one line followed by our statement. So if current character is greater than or equal to uh, capital A and current character is less than or equal to capital Z, then I know I have an uppercase character. So I'm going to do my ukase num becomes ukase num plus one. I'm assigning it a new value by tacking on one because I need two lowercase letters. Now in pseudocode, there is no else if. So you have to use else, which takes up a line. You got to use if, 
which takes up another line, then you can finally do your next statement. So if my cur current character is greater than or equal to lowercase a and less than lowercase z, then I know I have a lowercase character. So I have to use then, that takes up a whole line, and then I can do L case becomes L case uh, num plus one. I move on to the next sheet of paper they give me, and I have all this so you can see what we just wrote, so you can see where we're picking up. Else, there's another option that is not uppercase, it's not lowercase. Another option is that it's greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to nine. Now, you have to have this in a single quote. One, it's a character. Two, it's not an integer. If you put greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to nine, it's not going to work because we're using string manipulation. That's why there has to be a set of uh, single quotes around this. And if that is the case, then I know my number of characters needs to be incremented by one. Now, there's one other uh, option. Here's where we left off. Num chars becomes num chars plus one. There's one other option. The other option is that it's not A to Z capital. It's not lowercase A to Z. It's not zero to nine. If it's not that, then I know it must be a special character. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and return valid. Now remember, and you do not write this uh, parentheses here at all. Uh, remember, we set it to false at the beginning so we can just return it here since it can only have alphanumeric characters. If it has a exclamation mark, um, and that symbol, hashtag, pound sign, whatever you want to call it, any special characters across the top of a keyboard, we know it's going to be an invalid password. So that's why we're just going to go ahead, exit the function with uh, return. Then I use end if. I need to close my uppercase if statement. Remember, end if is one word, not two words. I need to close my lowercase if statement. I need to close the number characters statement. So I need to close all three of those. Then I need to close my for loop, which was for i. So I'm gonna let the examiner know, hey, I'm closing that for loop next i. Then I need an if statement. So if my u case num is greater than or equal to two, meaning do I have two capital letters, l case num greater than or equal to two, do I have at least two lowercase numbers, and then num char is greater than or equal to three. Does my password contain at least three numbers? If it has that, then I know it is a valid password. So valid becomes true. I close my end if, I simply return valid, and then I end my function. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow, and we'll see you guys in the next video.